thank you all for coming. Um, honor us with your presence. Um, we have a lot of uh, very interesting topic to um, discuss with you about. I'm sure you enjoy it. Um, so let's start. There are many reasons why the fintech industry was born, right? For example, in Europe, in US, the banks are heavy regulated and find it a little bit difficult to track the market changes. Any product adoption or technology implementation takes time and it's not in correlation to the market needs. In Africa continent, the main reason, as Andrew said, is financial inclusion. Many fintechs were established to allow to enable unserved people to be part of their financial network and services. However, unfortunately, the fintech companies, I hope you will agree with me, are a little bit less regulated from the banks. And that puts all of us in a little bit challenged position because the environment has less trust on fintech and the partners, the client, are uh, a real concern that the fintech will be indirectly involved in an illegit activity. South Africa as a main and core financial services industry in the Africa continent, and the fact that you are very much based on cash, unluckily put you in a very attractive position for financial crimes. I'm not sure if you, if you know, probably yes, you live here, but South African regulators estimate, not regulators, sorry, the governments estimate that the money laundering within the country is something between two to eight billion dollars every year. Money laundering from two to eight billion dollars every year. It's, it's huge. So yes, the regulators um, changing, trying at least to change this status quo and to put more uh, mandates, more risk control to the FinTech as well. Probably you heard a few months ago, Swiss bank was crashed. UBS purchased them. There were many reasons why the banks was crashed. It was liquidity, wrong financial reports. But another reason was the fact that they lost $1 billion for money laundering activities. 24 hours after this event happened, the UK government published risk control requirement specific to the fintechs that they must implement it. So this status quo mm. is being changed and we are all feeling that, right? You feel that you have more demands from the regulators um, and the regulators is not going to, to be easier. It's getting more and more sophisticated, complex. <clears throat> so, what are the challenges? We need to build a strong company, a trusted company, but we always need to follow up these regulation requirements. Another small exercise, please, with your permissions. How many of the financial institutions here use rule-based solution to monitor your transaction? Please raise your hand. Rule-based solution. Don't you use rule-based solution? Raise your hand, please, 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 please. You? What about you there? Okay. It looks like most of you use rule-based solution, if I may say. How many of you have less than 80% false positive alerts? Look at the audience. No, 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 no one. Raise your hands. It's crazy. We put um, so many effort to predefine all the rules, all the thresholds, all the bias. Okay, it takes time to do that. And you always need to maintain it along the way. You put a lot of effort 
to investigate a huge amount of alerts. Most of them, I see that you agree with me, most of them are actually more than 90% are not detected worthy, are false positive. So that's push, push, put us in a very weird position when we put a lot of effort, a lot of money, a lot of resources, but we are not yet effective. Um, another point, when you use these rule-based solutions that are very considered as very traditional way to monitoring your transactions, you also have lack of ability to detect what we call the unknown, unknown cases, the gray area where the real criminals actually act. They will not do a one million dollar transaction, right? They will play below your thresholds and they will do a lot of payments and they will connect it to other people. So this network, usually, we don't have the capability to follow it when we use role-based solution. So how we get over this challenge? Here you can see evaluation process, okay? So as I mentioned, rule-based solution, the left side of the screen, the bottom, are still considered as traditional way to monitor your payments because all the challenges I mentioned before, the efforts, the time consuming, the lack of ability to detect the unknown and unknown, the high ratio of false positive alerts, all this create a challenge. We also have another, sorry, another technology okay, in the market, which is AI-based, but it's called supervised AI. As you can literally hear in the word supervised, you as a compliance managers, as users, as technology people, need to supervise the machine. For every alert that you get, you need to feed the system with your knowledge. And based on your knowledge, the system is getting smarter and smarter. Definitely, it's better than rules. It's actually, if you can try to visualize it, it's like you put all your knowledge, all your team's knowledge, all the company knowledge into a machine. It's great, right? But what are the challenges? So the challenges in this case are as following. First of all, it takes time to train the system. It can take six months, one year. It really depends on your risk appetite, on your company um, style, if I will call it like this. So this is one um, challenge. Second challenge is you still have lack of ability to detect the unknown and unknown cases. Why? Because you put your knowledge into it. But all the idea is what you don't know that you don't know. So yes, you will have better um, false positive ratio. If, by the way, the practice in the market rules more than 90, 95% false positive alerts. AI supervised around 50, 60, so it's improved your, your position. There is another solution uh, or technology that exists, and this is AI unsupervised machine learning. Maybe you can already guess, unsupervised means that you don't need to supervise the machine. So how it works, very simple. Based on historical data, based on your historical data, the system will learn the normal behavior of your client and will create a normal behavior profile for each of your client in different territories, different client, different segments. Each one will have its own behavior. And the learning process is not out of context. It's based on red flags, or what we call risk indicators, like volume, value, turnover between incoming and outgoing, um, suspicious keywords, any risk indicator that is relevant to your business will be part of that. 
And for each and each risk indicator, the system will create normal behavior profile for your clients. So this is the unsupervised machine learning. Now, once you have the normal behavior profile, it's pretty easy to identify abnormal behavior or anomalies in the data or outlines behavior, right? So this is actually the new, uh, I will call it trend in the market. And now I'm getting into what um, we do. So it's actually integrated detection package. So it's give you, obviously, we have the unsupervised machine learning. Again, based on your historical data, we learn the normal behavior. We detect any abnormal behavior. By the way, the learning process, unlike the supervised machine learning, takes few hours, or same day, let's say. It's not months of training. So we have the AI, we cover. We also have rules. So I can say many bad things about rules, but let's face it, we cannot get rid of rules. The regulators is still asking us to report very specific scenarios, deterministic thresholds. You don't need AI to know that X country is a high-risk country, right? Very simple one. So once you have the integration or combination of AI and rules and network analysis. Network actually means that we don't monitor only customer by customer or transaction by transaction. We also looking for the connections between them, for the network, okay? We all know that money laundering, tourism funding, human traffic, terrible crimes like this are not being done in one shot or one transaction. It's always a network between people, between countries, between different participants. So this network is what we are looking for. So the combination of these three layers, the AI and the rules and the network monitoring is what um, Tether is actually offers. Um, so looking ahead, what we can do uh, to make it better. So we already covered the part that the regulation is not going to be easier, right? It's always getting more and more complicated. The technology also may, uh, is made more and more sophisticated, and the criminals as well. So in order to fight against it, you need also very sophisticated technology. This technology will bring you the trust that I spoke before that is a little bit missing within the fintech industry. And while you, you will have trust, obviously the environment, the partners, the banks, the clients will be more happy to engage with the fintech industry and that's what will bring the growth. So how are you doing this more, but with less effort? Less, when I'm saying effort, I mean time and money, right? So um, as I mentioned, the integrated capabilities that Tetere has give you what you see in this slide. So actually, from risk coverage point of view, you have the ability to detect the unknown unknown that I mentioned, the combination of rules, AI, and network analysis. This is actually summarize all what I just discussed. Um, and the ability to um, configure the system capabilities into any local environment and requirement and regulations requirements. From operation point of view, I want to skip to this diagram. Everybody see it? This is a real case, real case, that we did with one of our client bank, by the way, for the bank's people. And what we do here, what we did here, is we actually implemented our solution in parallel to the 
legacy rule-based solution and we compare the results. This was, if I'm not wrong, for six months period. You can see that the legacy rule-based solution generated 70% false positive alerts. And honestly speaking, this is extremely good number for a rule-based solution. Previously, we said the experience is the market in 90-95%. Tetra solution on the same database for a very short period generated almost 80% detected worthy alerts. This a game changer. It's actually the mirror picture. Okay? So think about it. Let's assume this company that we did the case study with, let's assume they have 100 alerts to investigate. Day, week, month, does not really matter. We managed to reduce the number of alerts to 10, from 100 to 10. And within these 10, eight were detected worthy. So this is the efficiency I'm talking about. This is how you can do much more from risk coverage, but put less effort to investigate. And when you investigate, you can make sure that you investigate the relevant things, the detected worthy activities. So um, this is it. This is us, Tetra.